I brought Icelander to my armory event. Let's see if she's hot or not. Hi friends, welcome back to Nearly Sane Games. I'm Neil, and this is the Armory Report. This week's armory event was Blitz, and I decided to bring Icelander to see how she could do. Now I've been kind of looking at different people's builds, and I kind of have a little bit of my own take on it. So let's take a look at the deck. All right, let's take a look at this deck. First off, we'll start off with our hero, Icelander. And she says, if it's not your turn, you may play a non-attack action card with blue color strips from your arsenal as though they were an instant. And whenever you play an ice card during an opponent's turn, create a frostbite token under your control. Note that this does not say that it has to be played from arsenal. So if you have a uh, an, an instant that you can play, uh, an ice instant, uh, that will also give them a frostbite token, even if it's played from your hand. So that's some cool stuff. Uh, 18 health, a little bit less than uh, your normal hero, but a little bit more than Kano, also for intellect. All right, for her weapons, uh, we have a Kraken's Aether Vein. Uh, this is real nice for playing against Rune Blades and Brutes and Mechanologists. Uh, the Mirror Match also likes this. You, you want to have this little poke, and when you deal one damage with this, they you also draw a card. So potentially you can cycle a blue if they're not going to pay for it. And if they do pay for it, you're pulling another card out of their hand. It's pretty much a win-win for you using this guy. Uh, we also have our standard weapon that will give a plus one to our arcane damage. Uh, we want to use this against guardians, warriors, ninjas, uh, against the Mirror of Kano, uh, we're, we're going to need a little bit extra to push our Arcane Damage over the top. So, uh, for uh, the Wizard Mirror, uh, mostly for just Kano, uh, we also have a Null Rune Hood. I have a Null Rune Robe. This really should be a Heart of Ice. Uh, I don't have a Heart of Ice, but Heart of Ice does wonders against Kano and is also every bit of uh, what Null Rune Robe is. But we have some Null Rune available to us. Uh, we have Ironhide Legs, and this is specifically for the Benji matchup. We want to make sure that we have equipment that we can block and uh, have that available. They're usually going to come over the top with a Razor in addition to uh, their their big attack that lets them draw, but we need more block. And then Ironhide Gauntlet. I've been using this a lot. Uh, again, for Benji, we need this, and for Warriors, we'd like this. But this also gives us some extra block that we can use. And I found this really good. Um, and I, I've been using it a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, and then we have our standard equipment, uh, Skull Cap. Uh, excellent block for us. Really need that. Uh, tunic gives us extra resources every th three turns. And uh, I've seen some of the Icelander matches go very quickly, uh, but some of them drag on a little bit longer. I do like the tunic. Uh, I, I generally like it better than um, deep blue, but some people like putting deep blue in that. Uh, Metacarpus nodes. Uh, again, I, I've been using, uh, for most of my matches, I, I've put in the gauntlet just to have more block instead. Uh, this is good for burning out our opponents, but uh, I, I think using the gauntlet in most cases would be fine. Uh, and then, of course, Storm Striders. We're going to use this in almost every match, uh, being able to pop it and give one of our... Uh, Arcane damage, uh, make that an instant, is well worth everything. It also has Arcane Barrier 2 in the Wizard Mirror. Uh, almost all, all matches we want to run this, it's an all-star. And then we have Gambler's Gloves. If you run into KO, uh, Gambler's Gloves are, are going to be what you want, want to have available to you. 
All right, let's go through our cards. We're going to start with some attacks. Uh, Enlightened Strike is uh, just a pretty good card for us. I say pretty good. It, 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 it can do, it's very versatile for us, and that's, that's the important part. Uh, if we need a card to Arsenal, we can draw a card. Uh, bring it in for with a plus two for seven is great. And there's potential that we could give it go again if we have uh, a piece of arcane say that we want to do after this. So uh, pretty versatile. Um, and it, it, it really does what we want it to do. So run two of those. All right. These are our main cards for war. This is, this is what I think makes Icelander a lot different than Kano. We have Exude Confidence and Fire Breathing. And these two cards are excellent because you um, Exude Confidence has pay three and it gets plus two. And Fire Breathing has pay one and it gets plus one. So both of these are great. Um, Fire Breathing costs two, Exude Confidence is zero. But you can put these down and your opponent has to think about what they're going to do. So with a four card hand, if you have three blues, of course, you'll have to pay for fire breathing. And let's say you also have a tuna counter. Uh, exude confidence, you can pump three more blues into that and make this a 10. Fire breathing, you can dump your extra mana that you paid for the one and have two more blues that you're going to pay, which would give you six, seven more. So that brings that to 10. And with the tunic, you can make it 11. If you play these from Arsenal, of course, you could have more resources. And these are a great decision point for your opponents. You can just drop these and they have to decide whether or not they're going to block, overblock what they're going to do with this. And uh, it's really great for pulling cards out of their hands. And if they don't, they'll get punished for it. And you can dump a lot of resources into it. So these are an excellent attack for us. We run a couple of sink belows. It's good to have some defense reactions for us. And then we go into our ice package. Uh, Channel Lake Frigid is an all-star. It is excellent if you arsenal this because we can play this as an instant. This gives us another turn that we could potentially run this. Uh, so in response to them doing, let's say they're uh, activating Bravo in response, Channel Lake Frigid. Now everything they do costs one more. And if I can pitch an ice card, it'll stay around another turn uh, after my turn. Uh, I don't think you're going to get generally get two, uh, two passes through your turn on this one, but uh, definitely get one. Uh, we're definitely running two of those. Blizzard uh, makes a, an action lose go again. This has to target an attack. But this is an instant. You could play it from your hand. And with Icelander's ability, they'll get a Frostbite token in addition to having to pay two. So they have to drop a blue in order to keep their go again and pay for their next action. A very good card for this deck. Winter's Bite. Uh, the Blizzard also doesn't block, which isn't great, but that's fine. Winter's Bite. Uh, kind of a nice card to have. Either on you play it on your turn, and they have to dump a card or discard a card. Either way, they have to they have to discard a card. This is nice for uh, especially on an e strike turn that they have to dump a card. It's uh, less good if they have arcane barrier and they dump a blue and pay. Uh, then they just have two resources for uh, blocking out your arcane. But this can be good on the end of an arcane turn after they've decided that they're not going to block the arcane. They take the arcane and then you take a card from their hand anyway. So that's fun. Uh, Winter's Grasp, another blue that uh, blocks for three. Uh, that's about all I got to say for that one. <laughs> and then Icy Encounter, another uh, blue ice card. This only blocks for two. Um, would be better if it blocked for three. Uh, generally not attacking with this, but just having more ice blues in your hand. All right, so then we get to some wizard cards. Emeritus Scolding. This thing is excellent. It's great from your arsenal with the blue one. 
I played out at instant speed for four arcane damage on their turn. And uh, it's a great finisher because if you play it on their turn, again, you can send over six arcane damage. You can do this. You can pop your boots and play this for one blue. And uh, it can be game ending. Uh, snapback, another uh, wizard all-star. Three arcane damage, and you can play it as an instant in response to something else, or it, at, after you've played another wizard action. So you play your Emeritus Scolding and finish up with a snapback. It's a lot of arcane damage coming at you. Voltic Bolt, again running the reds and the blues. Five arcane damage for the reds, three arcane for the blue, again out of arsenal. Uh, just, just some good damage to push over. Stir the Aether Winds. This can open up your hand. Um, this only gives your effect plus one because it's the blue, but we're going to be playing it from Arsenal, and that gives us opportunity to play other things from Arsenal. And there's a few things that you can do with the resources. Uh, you can use this to play a snapback, uh, which isn't the best value for a blue, but if you're pitching two blues, you can use uh, Crucible of Aetherweave if you have that, if you're playing that. Uh, you can also use that to pay for your Ironhide Gauntlet so that you can block with that and still have a good return in Arcane Damage. Scour. This is a necessity. Uh, this is good again, is especially good against Viscerai. Uh, also good against Prism. Uh, it would be nice if you had a sideboard and you could sideboard this out in, in games that you don't need it. But if you don't need it, it is a blue pitch. It is a block three. Uh, still can do work for you. Rousing Aether. Um, not real excited about this card. It's only two arcane damage. It gives your next attack, your, your next arcane plus one. Uh, so it's fine. Uh... If you don't have that next attack, if you if it's if you don't have a snapback, it's not real great for playing on their turn. Uh, playing on your turn, I, again, you need a snapback to uh, get that extra point over. Uh, not real excited about this, but it does block three. It is a blue, so there it is. Timekeeper's whim. Now I like this card. It it does cost three, which isn't great, but it does block for three. It is a blue pitch. And still does three arcane damage, so that's not too bad. And if it's played during your opponent's turn, you get to put it at the bottom of your deck, and uh, you'll still have, uh, it'll help you not deck out as much. So I like this card. Then we have this round's on me. This is a weird one. Uh, I like to try to save this one for, uh, if we're going for the win, uh, potentially we each draw a card and uh, maybe I can use that card to push damage over or find the damage that I need. You have to be careful when you play this card because giving your opponent a, a draw can be detrimental to you. Uh, but all of the attacks the next turn have minus one. This is very nice against Prism. And uh, just be careful when you use this and consider who you're playing against when you use this. If you're playing against something like uh, uh, Cassi, you probably don't want her to have additional cards. Uh, she will wreck you. And then a couple of energy potions. These are great. These are blue. These are non-attack actions. You can play them out of your arsenal at instant speed and uh, have extra uh, mana of, or have extra pitch available for your fire breathing and exude confidence. And that's the deck. All right, let's see how I did with four rounds of Blitz. My first round was against Kasai. Kasai was running Arcane Barrier 2. So I start things off with a Voltic Bolt for six. Kasai runs back some attacks, and I try to take as much as I can there. I send over an Exude and pump it up to six. Uh, comes back with some more attacks, and I block a little bit. I run over a double snapback for seven. Uh, attacks come back, and 
I use my armor to block things out and stay alive. We're, at this point, we're at, he's at four, I'm at one. Uh, I send over an exude confidence. He blocks for five. I'm able to pump it up to 10 for the win. Round two against Kale. Kale. Well, time for the gambler's gloves. His first turn, he rolls scab skins and rolls a six. <sighs> really didn't want to pop my gloves on the first turn, but I can't let Kale have three attacks first turn. So I pop my gloves. He rerolls a six. All right. He sends over claws. I block. His next attack is uh, for 15. I ping him for one with Crucible or with uh, the Kraken. And uh, then I block 10. He attacks for three. I skull cap. And uh, already we're down to, he's at 19, I'm at 11. This is not the way I want it to go. So I drop an exude confidence. He says no blocks. I pump it up to 10. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So now we're down to, he's at nine and I'm at 11. Uh, he attacks, I block and also ping him with Kraken's Aether Vein. Uh, then I send over an, an E-Strike for seven, do another ping. He's down to not, he's down to two. I'm still at nine. He attacks Storm Striders, American Meredith Scalding for the win. Round three against a Bravo. Bravo brings in all the Arcane Barrier. Arcane Barrier 4. During this match, I was able to find both my Channel Lake Frigids. And one of those I was able to keep over for another an additional round. Uh, I dropped a Fire Breathing, and he blocked for 6. But I was able to pump it up to 11. Uh, I send over an E-Strike, and that eats one of his unmovables. Two cards from hand. Uh, that's still probably pretty okay for me. Uh, hammers come over. Uh, I block. Then I'm able to uh, pop my striders and hit an emeritus scolding uh, for the win. He he was out of cards. He had uh, he was down to three life. I was at one, and uh, scolding comes over the top. All good. Round four was against another Kasai. Arcane Barrier won this time. Um, what I found is when you put down Icelander, uh, people don't know how much Arcane Barrier to bring in. And that's just going to serve to your advantage, uh, especially if you're doing the mixed version. There is a version of Icelander that you can do that is much more Arcane focused and much more basic wizard. But with this, uh, when you're throwing e strikes, when you when you have the uh, the fire breathings and the exude confidence, it makes things complicated. It's kind of like dealing a, dealing with um, a rune blade. You've got mixed damage coming in, and it makes it much more difficult to block. But he's running only arcane barrier one. This works well for me. So uh, first turn, I send over a timekeeper's whim for three, and that immediately, you know, he takes two for that. Uh, and then I arsenal a stir. He swings big, and I go down to seven. But on that same turn, I'm able to return with a stir and an emeritus scolding that comes in for seven with a snapback that I'm able to pump up, comes in for another four. Now we're both down to seven. This game's pretty interesting. Uh... He runs over, he th throws back a saber, which uh, I block with equipment. And then he sends over another saber for five. At this point, I have a uh, 
I, the first saber I blocked with from hand. Uh, and the second saber he sends over for five. And I have a sink below in my hand and an E strike and a blue card. So uh, I decide that I, he still has two cards in hand. So I decide that I'm just going to throw down the sink below. Uh, this was the mistake. I, I should have thrown down a three block and uh, because I could have still used the E-Strike with the sink if, if that needed to happen. But he drops six more points of damage on that and uh, kills me uh, for exactly seven. Uh, so that was my fault. But pretty close match. I think if I had done uh, a three block, I could have used the sink, survived another turn, uh, arsenaled the E-Strike, and there is a line that I could have had that could have let me kill him seven with the boots and Emeritus Scolding, but I just wasn't thinking about that. So that should have been a block. My fault, but uh, loss anyway. Sometimes you just miss it. I uh, had a bonus round for against a Reinar. So first attack, he comes over and intimidates two and drops a Blood Rush Bellow. I, I block his first claw and take five. Uh, I drop an Exude Confidence and that hits for one. And I also ping him for one, get to draw a card. And uh, Arsenal a sink below. He sends over a wild ride and some claws. Um, I block, block with my sink, and Arsenal a blue Emeritus Scolding. His attack comes in, and I block, go to one, and then I Scolding him down to three. So we're three to one. He sends over his big attack. Pop the Striders. Emeritus Scolding with a snapback. He's got nothing. So, Icelander. Bringing it to Blitz. Official record, three to one. Uh, but still got an extra win off the other game. So four to one with this deck. This thing is incredible and does great things. Uh, I highly recommend playing it, uh, especially if you have the Heart of Ice. You're really going to want the Heart of, Heart of Ice against Kano. Uh, it just, it, it's pretty much a soft lock against Kano. You Heart of Ice and Kano has to do his thing and decide what he wants to do. And you are open to do whatever you want. Um, and then you're running Arcane Barrier 5. So hard for Kano to do anything against that. Uh, Icelander is really a fun deck to play with the combination of disruption and all of these attacks. And that's especially exciting considering the announcement that Icelander is coming to Classic Constructed. With the next set, we're going to have an adult Icelander uh, that has just been shown in the spoilers for Uprising. So I'm super excited about that, especially considering uh, how well this did in Blitz. And I'm excited to see how she's going to do in Classic Constructed. Uh, really a fun deck to play and very, very powerful. I think that is going to lose a little bit of its power as people learn how to play against it as people learn that you have to block the fire breathing or have defense reactions against the fire breathing and the uh, exude confidence. So I, I think that she's riding high right now and she's probably going to come down a few notches, but still has a lot of very powerful things that she can do. And uh, I'm excited to see more. So that's it for this week. Uh, Next week is going to be sealed, uh, WTR as usual. Um, yeah, so that's it for this week. Uh, 
I'm Neil, and you've been watching The Armory Report.